Uh, good morning. I'm going to invite you um, and actually to motivate you to visit the Lala Lab exhibition. So when you exit this building, you go straight, and the first building you will see, you enter the first door on your right, and then you go left, and you will see an exhibition which has been developed in a laboratory style. This means it's not a collection of predefined instruction panels, but it's more a set of tools that invite you to experiment, to play with a lot of parameters and to be creative in a way to create sounds, scales, waves, um, interpretations. The exhibition itself is highly interactive, it's participative in a way, not only the user experience itself, but also the way it has been designed. So the whole exhibition itself, the production of the exhibits, was an international effort um, with research teams, um, I think in eight countries, from Brazil to the US, Czech Republic, Germany, Austria, France. Um, and the focus is on current research connecting mathematics and music. Uh, following the open science approach, the whole exhibition is open source. So whatever you see at the exhibition, be it the uh, 3D data, the 2D data, the software data, the instruction manuals, everything is open, uh, available uh, in order to be copied by you and in order to be extended. So the motivation here is to show you three, very quickly, three exhibits of Lala Lab. I'm going to start with the Con Espressione exhibit developed by Gerhard Wiedmer, uh, machine learning expert in Austria and his team. Um, the current research in AI and music at the moment is very, there's a lot happening. So it's, it's in AI guided composition, improvisation and in interpretation. So take this simple problem. Uh, I give you a score. Um, I give you as a machine the score and then the machine should play the score. It would not sound very nice. So here, what you see is on the top, you see the score. On the bottom, you see the performance by a grand piano player, um, how that player would play that score. So if you look at the first chord, the three notes, and you go to the diagram below, you would see that the uh, pianist would play the first note a little bit earlier. It would play it a he would play it or she would play it a little bit uh, more streng uh, strong. So the higher it is, the velocity, the, the more louder it is. The second uh, note of the chord would be a little bit shorter and the third one would be a little bit longer. So it's not playing all the three notes at the same time in the same moment, there's a variation in it, and that's the interpretation, that's actually the beauty of performance and the beauty of the interpretation. So to find out features, what makes the difference between a, a mechanically played score and an interpretation, that's the research work of Gerhard Widmer, and he uh, got a very big data set of a pian pianist playing all the, the work of Chopin, and he derived uh, five parameters. So um, the exhibit consists of, you conduct, as, an, as a user, you conduct a piano play, and the AI helps you to make this kind of micro adjustments in different settings. So it, uh, you as the user, could, or as the visitor, you, could, you adjust the general tempo, which would be the general um, speed of the, of the piano play, also the loudness, and the, the AI would make the micro changes in the micro timing, that's when do you hit the different notes in the chord, the articulation, how long would you play each note of that individual chord, and the dynamic spread, how strong would you play them. I'm going to show you a video now, I invite you to experience it yourself, where you would see first a mechanical playing of the Mondschein Sonate by Beethoven. So uh, you would see the bars will not move, so it will, it will stay strict. At one point, the conductor will, will step into the game, the human conductor, so you would see variance in the, in the volume and in the speed, and then you would see at one point how the AI would do all these micro-adjustments.
The nice part of that exhibit is this interplay between the human side, the conducting, and the AI side. I will jump to the next uh, exhibit. It's called Scale Lab. That's the most, um, I would say, the most deep and complex exhibit we have at the exhibition. Um, it has been developed by Jürgen richter Gebert, who is among us in the audience and who uh, agreed to be also with us at the exhibition later, if you want to meet him, um, from the te uh, Technical University of Munich. And I'm going to show you the exhibit itself. So we are going to choose um, a simple sine wave at the beginning. The question, it's all about scales. So you would have um, here the continuous tone spectrum. So you could try to make music using all types of tones. Yeah? But it's much easier if you take a concrete subset of all the tones. And the big question is, how do you choose this subset? How, you, how do you choose a scale? Um, I'm going to jump here to one type of scale. So here you see that the blue lines, so they would connect one note to one key. So now I can play the keys here and I would have a subsection of these notes. So the question is, what would sound nice? I, of course, I want a good subset and I want a subset that sounds nice. So in the, the Greeks, if you look at the ratios here, um, they found, this is the so-called Pythagorean tuning, that if you have um, ratios of small numbers, fractions of small numbers, um, for example, here you have this frequency and the double of the frequency, or the frequency and 1.5 1, 1 of the frequency, or 4 over 3 of the frequency, that these actually sound nice. And if, if you take something like this, it would sound not that pleasant. Now, um, how can you, uh, is there a way to visualize this? There is a way if you take the so-called Lisa shoe figures, so you, you uh, display the wave of uh, one key and the other wave of the other, of the other key uh, perpendicular, um, and you play them together, and then you can observe what happens if you play different chords. Do you see the difference if I play something like this? Here, two notes very close, you see a certain close, certain beating, and if I play the, the fifth or the third, you would see a kind of a stable image. So there's a visual a connection to a pleasant sounding chords, yeah, if, this, if the image is stable, and not that pleasant sounding if the Im image is moving. Now, this doesn't explain why, so there's a very uh, interesting connection to Heidelberg. Um, Hermann von Helmholtz, a physicist, a famous physicist, he was working here in Heidelberg, and he found, um, he did a survey, and he came up with a model to model uh, dissonance and consonance. So, um, based on a, on a starting note, um, he said, or he, f he found this curve, so if you're very close, the higher, the higher the curve is, the less pleasant it would sound. And uh, the, the, clo the lower it is, the, the more pleasant it would sound. Now, the interesting part of his theory is if you start adding overtones. Usually, uh, you, would not you would not hear a clear sine wave. So you add overtones here, and then you would see, here at the minimum of that curve, it would sound much better than here. You hear the difference? Um, of course, depending on the instrument, so this would be, if you have a, a normal spread between the overtones, it would be something like a string instrument. You can also change the spread. You would see how the dissonance curve would change. The sound of the instrument would change, so this would be more like a bell sound, and of course you would have to adjust the scaling too. Um, this tool allows you to really jump into the theory of scales. So here you would have the Western scales. I quickly show you some non-Western scales. So there's the Indian scale, where you have um, a connection of um, working with the perfect fifth. So you have a bass note, um, and you have subscales. So here, for example, Sales. You can also go to Gamelan music and try to play here. And also start to build your own free scales. So the third exhibit I'm going to show is related to the maybe most complex and uh, oldest instrument we all have. Uh, the exhibit is called Pink Trombone, but it's of course the voice. Uh, I have a very, very nice um, video. It's a, a magnetic resonance image from the Freiburg University of Musical Medicine. And um, it's a baritone singing Wagner. 
So now the question is, how can we model the voice mathematically? So um, the next exhibit was done by Neil Tappen from the Czech Academy of Sciences. He's a mathematician. And actually the voice, um, in, in short, it has two parts. So you have the sound production part, which sits here in the glottis, that uh, you control the strength and the pitch of the sound. And then you have the sound articulation part, so that, that very overtone rich wave would come into your mouth and then you would modulate the volume of your mouth and then you would have um, at the end your voice. So I'm, I will show you this exhibit. So this is the sound production part. So Okay, there's no mouth. And here we would have a cross section through the mouth, 2D, and this would be the position of the tongue. So now I can start moving the tongue. You can also connect it to the nose, nose, or you can do some things like this. Now, the task is uh, uh, to say words. So maybe you can imagine silently, say your name and see how the tongue would move. I will try to make the la la lap, which is not that difficult. <laughs> <laughs> and you can imagine, uh, I've seen a video that says Donald, Donald Duck, and um, there are, you can try to do Heidelberg Laureate form as a mission. Okay, so I'm, I'm already here ending. Um, I invite you to visit the exhibition, I invite you to experience the beauty of mathematics and music, and I invite you to contribute your own ideas not only for math and music at Imaginary, that's the organization behind a non-profit, plus a big community of researchers, we do communication of current research. And we invite you to join us to share your current research in this open science approach. And I can guarantee you um, it will benefit um, yourself, uh, humanity, and also your science. Thank you very much.